Mornings at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good Saturday morning, everyone. Welcome to Good Morning San Antonio. Taking a look at live cam. And uh, we are off to a start here on the weekend, getting ready for Sarah Spivey's forecast. Expect to be another hot one out here in the San Antonio area, but it is the weekend though, so we're excited. Good morning, RJ. Mm -hmm. So lovely to have you. Yeah, filling in for my guy, Max Massey. Max <laughs> on vacation. Shout out to him. So uh, glad to be hanging out with you all today. Okay, so it was well over 100 yesterday. Yes. <laughs> today, probably the same, but Sarah, can we just talk about this cool front that's coming in the next couple of days. Let's just yeah, focus on that. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, there's actually a Positive. window for rain today okay. that I want to talk about. But this may just be our last triple digit weekend of 2023. In fact, I'm going to okay. put my plant flag my what what's the phrase you're going to plant your flag plant your flag <laughs> thank you plant your flag no, sarah i'm going to not get much sleep last yeah. night and say that it will be the last okay. 100 flag down <laughs> it's there plan away Okay, outside right now, it is 79 degrees, 78 in New Braunfels, 75 in Seguin, 73 in Bernie, and 74 in Kerrville. But here's what you care about. Here's the weekend forecast for you. 104 today, so just as hot as yesterday. But between the hours of 5 p.m. and 9 p.m., there is a chance for an isolated thunder shower or two. And then as we head into tomorrow, 101. So still hot, still in the triple digits, but slightly slightly better rain chances between about 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. So there's a lot to talk about in the forecast, including tonight. A lot of people are going to be out and about for those high school football games this evening. So coming up, I'll have a look at the forecast, give you a better idea of this timeline from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we'll also talk about how if a storm develops, it could be on the strong or severe side. So there's a lot of details to work through. I'll be right back with your forecast in just a few minutes. RJ, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Just weeks into the new year, the San Antonio school says it is closing its doors. Students and staff at Jubilee Academy's Highland Park campus will move to other schools this month. John Paul Barajas explains the charter school district's decision. You know, go to starting school and then shutting it down, giving us two weeks. That's not good. Parents at Jubilee Highland Park say they're frustrated. The little one started class at the East Drexel Avenue campus on August 14th. Come August 31st, Jubilee Academies notified parents that Highland Park would close and students would start at another campus by September 18th. Everybody got this point. It was like a last minute thing. It was very emotional. We couldn't believe it. To hear that the school was closing was very heart wrenching. Associate Director of School Development Abel De Leon says they currently have 210 students, but needed 300 to keep the school operational. Let them finish the school year. We asked De Leon about making the changes during the school year. He said, quote, if we didn't rip the Band-Aid off now, there would be more pain later. He adds finishing the school year would have left Jubilee with a deficit of $1.5 million. They could have told us a lot sooner. De Leon tells us parents will be able to transfer their students to Jubilee Highland Hills or Jubilee San Antonio. The charter school district will offer bus transportation with drop off and pickup at the Highland Park campus through the end of the school year. But parents and students still have concerns. Some of them are saying, well, we're not going to meet each other no more. So they say, well, I'm not going to have my teacher. And said, so, no, you're going to have a new teacher. A smaller group of kids in each class. The attention from the from the teachers. De Leon says Jubilee Academies is doing its best to keep all teachers with their current students. Parents we spoke to say. They're still skeptical. They didn't ask for input. They didn't ask us how we felt. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. The county's top elected official says he's forming a city and county committee to tackle the complicated problem of why violent criminals are being released from jail only to commit more crimes. The district attorney's office handles an average of 50,000 cases each year, handled by roughly 200 criminal prosecutors. The DA's office is asking for more than $52 million in the upcoming year. Part of that would include pay increases for staff and additional positions. Joe Gonzalez says moving forward, his goal is to strengthen communication with law enforcement investigators to ensure that they have strong evidence to prosecute cases. What we, we can do and we are doing is uh, collaborate, collaborating better with law enforcement, uh, communicating with them, ensuring that we get the kind of uh, cases in our office where we can uh, expedite the prosecution of those cases. 
And four years ago, Gonzalez implemented a declination policy in which he would, in which he said he would pro not prosecute low-level drug offenses. He stopped that policy early this month. A state law that went into effect in September forced the DAs to prosecute those cases. On Monday, Police Chief Willie McManus and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez will be at a District 4 Public Safety Town Hall. The town hall is scheduled to start at 6 o'clock in the evening at St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church. That is on Marbach Road. We plan to live stream it on all of our KSAT platforms. And they fought for this country and now they need your help. But have you heard of combat controllers? They are the quiet professionals, the fearless few who are always the first there to ensure mission success. Combat controllers basically do it all. They're with the Air Force, they defend the U.S. in the air, on the ground, and in the waters. Thing is, a lot of people don't know they exist, and that's a problem because when those return home after being deployed, many of them struggle to find their way. That's why Eric Holman, himself a former combat controller, created the First There Foundation. It's a nonprofit that connects soldiers with jobs and mental health resources and helps their families. We send out baby blankets when guys have new babies, uh, Gold Star families, we check on them. Um, we paid for our Gold Star families, uh, you know, garbage disposal. There's 150 of them. Well, today the first, their foundation is holding a fundraiser gala. If you'd like to donate to the first their foundation, we have a link on our website, ksat.com. Early data from South America shows the flu vaccine has cut the risk of hospitalizations in half this year. That's based on about 3,000 patients hospitalized between late March and early July. It's a hopeful sign the vaccine will provide a similar level of protection in the U.S. as we head into flu season. According to the CDC, this year's mid-season flu vaccine data from five South American countries shows that vaccination has reduced the risk of hospitalization by 52%. In a letter to Congress, President Biden says his administration is continuing the national emergency initially declared under former President Trump. President Biden acknowledges there's no evidence of a foreign power altering votes in any U.S. election, but he says some countries continue to try to exploit the American political system. The emergency order sets standards for what constitute what constitutes election interference and officials are able to better understand how to handle those found responsible. All right, we always get these Apple update warnings here. So Apple is now urging iPhone and iPad owners to update their operating systems immediately. The company issued an update that fixes a vulnerability that hackers may already be exploiting. So this was discovered by the Citizen Lab at the University of Toronto. The security flaw exists in iOS 16.6.1. Experts say iPhone and iPad owners should immediately go to their settings menu on their device. From there, select general, then software update, then tap install now to begin the process. My phone alerted mm -hmm. me yesterday, last night, you need to update. And I was like, no, I'll do it yeah. later. I might, I'm like three updates behind, so I'm going <laughs> to have to catch up. This is probably going to get me to update. there's no hackers I, yeah, listening out not. there. I got nothing. <laughs> there's nothing good for me to hack in there. You can have it. Here you go. <laughs> All right. It is 6 away as we get set on your Saturday morning, looking at 78 degrees outside. Trouble on late night TV. Jimmy Fallon is responding to his former staff members that claim he created a toxic workplace environment that's coming up on GMSA at 6. <sighs> 78 degrees, guys. Yesterday, I decided to rip out my grass and put in new native plants. How did it go? Well, I almost died of heat exhaustion, Sarah, because... <laughs> I was like, yes. oh, yeah, I can do this in triple digits. It was horrible. Oh, my goodness. I know yeah. we got up to 104 yesterday. Yeah. It, and the key is we're going to be just as hot today. Yeah. But there is a window for rain. So there's a lot to talk about in the forecast. First, I want to start with the fact that today the high of 104 is likely going to beat a 130 year old record. So this will be the hottest September 9th on record for San Antonio. 
the record is 102 set back in 1893 and tomorrow we're going to be close to the record to 101 degrees. But as you look ahead, you can clearly see that temperatures are going to improve. It's still going to be warm. OK, we're still going to be looking at highs in the 90s, but I don't know about you. That is a vast improvement. Uh, from these triple digit temperatures. So something to look forward to after this very hot weekend. And there is a window for rain, which we'll talk about here in a bit. But first, I want to get you through your day outside right now. You can see just a few clouds out there at the airport. It's 79 degrees. Winds are from the south southwest at about 10 miles per hour. Generally this morning, temperatures are in the 70s and it is quite humid. As you look at your case 12 hour forecast, well, mostly sunny skies throughout most of the day by 10 and it's going to be 87 by noon, 94. So a very quick warm up. We're going to already be at 100 degrees by 2 p.m. And then it's in the later part of the afternoon and in the evening after 5 p.m. that we have that small 30% chance for an isolated shower or storm. Now, it is important to note as I take you through the future cast that don't pay attention to where the future cast puts these showers and storms. It's basically showing that there's just going to be a few around. So that's going to happen after 5 p.m. And again, few and far between 20 to 30 percent coverage. That is it. Then throughout the day tomorrow, it's going to start off very quiet. We'll have slightly better rain chances from 3 p.m. tomorrow to 8 p.m. tomorrow. Now, I think this particular model is overdoing it. It's showing a lot of rain right over San Antonio. That would be great, but I would just plan for about 40% coverage. That blob could be also over in areas west of San Antonio, too. So we will keep you posted. One thing to keep in mind, even though rain is a good thing, especially right now, is that there is a severe weather risk with any storms that develop this evening and tomorrow. The primary threat would be damaging wind gusts, you know, the kind that just end up putting out maybe 60 mile per hour wind gusts, which could easily break tree limbs and even uh, have light patio furniture swung around. But there is a big condition here. That's if you get a storm. A lot of people in this yellow blob are not going to be seeing rain. However, it is a small possibility and it's a small possibility when a lot of people are going to be out and about for tonight's football game. So keep that in mind too. plan for the heat, but just watch out if a storm does develop. There may be some lightning delays if that ends up happening. Only a 30% chance, okay? Kick off 99 degrees, so again, it's going to be hot. And even by halftime, 93. Sunsets is going to be close to about a 750 this evening. Now, there is good news in the forecast. So again, tomorrow, 40% chance. In the week ahead, there will be at least a chance every day for an isolated shower storm. This is not going to be the big drought denter or buster that we need, but there will be a small chance for rain just about every day. And it's because this weak cool front is going to be moving through South Central Texas on Tuesday. That's why our temperatures are going to go down into the 90s, and that's why we're going to have a small chance for rain just about every single day. Hey, coming up in the forecast, we are going to uh, take a look at the tropics. Again, remember Hurricane Lee, it was category five hurricane. I've got the latest track on Hurricane Lee as well. Yeah, and Sarah, you know, there's going to be a lot of people out the Alamo Dome today. It's UTSA's home opener. Absolutely. It's mm -hmm. Texas State. Shout out. What time Bobcats. is that game? Game's at 2.30. Okay, so, so tailgate starting any... around 11. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just going to be hot for right. those folks yeah. for the UTSA game. Yeah. I mean, especially on that asphalt. So again, heat safety. We've had 72, 100 mm -hmm. degree days. We know, but it's important to remember. Hydrate. Yep. Absolutely. With water, not the other last alcoholic weekend, beverages. <laughs> I am calling it right She's now. Putting our her last, <laughs> last triple digit weekend the of the year. Planted. Planted. Yeah. I'm excited for that. I also said my Chiefs were going to beat the Detroit oh, Lions. Wow. Oh, no, no, oh, don't well, leave that. The other you day. Too. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank All you, right, Sarah. guys, it is uh, 616 on your Saturday morning and uh, yeah, looking at 78 degrees outside right now. So coming up next in Hollywood, the latest on the former That 70s Show star Danny Masterson and his sentencing, plus a look at movies and theaters this weekend. Oh man, see this is why I didn't want to tell you.
Former That 70s Show star Danny Masterson has been sentenced to 30 years to life in prison after being convicted of raping several women. The actor didn't speak in court during the sentencing, but several of his victims did, in tears, one describing the severe PTSD and waves of panic she suffers because of the abuse. The 47-year-old Masterson will spend at least 25 years locked up before he's eligible for parole. His attorneys say they'll appeal. Mark Anthony, known by many as the king of salsa, now a Hollywood star. His name now permanently etched on Hollywood Boulevard, though he said during the ceremony he doesn't feel he's worthy of the honor. I feel like I just started. That's what's weird to me is I just started. This is just the beginning. Anthony's close friend David Beckham also on hand for the event, along with two of Anthony's sons and his wife, Nadia. <laughs> In theaters this weekend, The Nun 2 is looking to scare up the most cash. We're going to Greece. Oh, yeah. While another sequel, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3, should finish in the top three. And raise your glass to pink today. It's her birthday. The superstar singer is 44. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Some other entertainment news, Jimmy Fallon is apologizing to his staff over allegations of a difficult work environment at The Tonight Show. The allegations were first published in a story by Rolling Stone on Thursday. The magazine cited 16 unnamed current and former employees who described a difficult work environment on the show. Fallon apologized to staff members during a Zoom call. In a statement, NBC told Rolling Stone that the network encourages employees to report their concerns. Yeah, we were talking about that. It's kind of an interesting story there. Didn't see that one coming. I want to see what else comes out. Yeah, there's always, yeah, there's always mm -hmm. the next part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, it is Saturday morning. Filling in for Max today. Really happy to be spending some time with you guys. It's 622 and 78 degrees outside. Don't get angry with me. That's new music from Rolling Stone, plus Joni Mitchell releasing a never-before-heard song as well. We have your sneak peek up next. Rolling Stones Get Angry. That's the name of the first single from the Stones' forthcoming album, Hackney Diamonds. The album releases October 20th, marking the first original studio album from the Stones since 2005's A Bigger Bang. Joni Mitchell has unveiled a never-before-heard song. Like Vale's said Lorraine was recorded as a demo in late 1971 and early 1972 and will be on the upcoming Joni Mitchell Archives Volume 3, The Asylum Years, 1972 to 1975, which arrives on October 6th. You'll take my life out, I'll take yours too. You'll fire a musket, but I'll run you through. That's Silent Skies, covering Iron Maiden's The Trooper. The song is part of a trio of covers featured among the band's originals on its new album. With these three songs, uh, The Trooper, Dancing in the Dark by Bruce Springsteen, and Numb by Linkin Park, it's thinking about the lyrical stories and what's really being conveyed within the lyrics. It's our personal take on these stories. But for us, The Trooper is a very sad and tragic song. On the one hand, it can be viewed as galvanizing the troops, but for us, it's actually more about the senselessness of war. Silent Sky's latest album, Dormant, is out now. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 627 and 78 degrees. We'll be right back. It's 6.30 on Saturday, September 9th. Welcome to Good Morning San Antonio. And welcome, RJ. Always a pleasure yes. to have you. Yeah, absolutely. Love filling us. in with you guys. Love to be able to hang out and spend a Saturday morning. Stepping in for my guy, Max Massey. 
So oh. much needed vacay. Yeah, he deserves a <laughs> vacation. Away from this triple digit, Sarah. I know. But hey, what's going on in the tropics? Yeah, let's check in with Hurricane Lee. The nation's been talking about it because it was at one point a Category 5 hurricane. Now, Lee, as it has entered uh, the cooler waters, it has weakened a little bit. It's a Category 3 hurricane, so still a major hurricane. Now, there are all indications that Lee will strengthen even further into a Category 4 hurricane once again. In, and then it's going to turn uh, and it's going to slow down quite a bit. I mean, it's still going to be out in the middle of the Atlantic by the middle of the week. And most indications are that it is going to head away from the East Coast, which is good news. However, Bermuda will need to be on alert for this and potentially uh, up into parts of Canada as well. However, here in San Antonio, as we approach the peak of hurricane season, we're still looking for any drop of rainfall. It's 79 degrees outside right now in San Antonio, 73 in Rock Springs, 71 in Uvalde, 75 in Cristo Springs and 79 in Del Rio. But this is how hot it's going to be today. 104 for the high temperature in San Antonio. That is going to beat a 130 year old record for September 9th. Impressively hot this weekend, but there is a window for rain this evening between about 5 p.m. and about 8 p.m. That's the window for rain today. Isolated, so not everybody's going to see a storm. And in fact, if you actually do see a storm, it could be on the strong or severe side with damaging wind gusts. So coming up, we're going going to go over this timeline a little bit better what to expect during those high school football games this evening and for your Sunday as well when we'll actually have slightly better rain chances, but it's still going to be hot. I'll have those details coming up in just a bit. RJ, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Following some top stories this morning, Guyan Bettis has been found not guilty. Bettis admitted on a 911 call to shooting his mother's boyfriend in 2022, but he says it was to protect a family member. In August of 2022, Bettis was accused of shooting and killing 39-year-old Luis Rosales. Rosales was accused of sexually assaulting one of Bettis's close relatives. At the end of Bettis's trial, Bettis and his family were grateful a Bear County jury cleared him of murder. We feel that justice has been served on Guyan. You know, he took the actions he took to defend the ones he loved. But prosecutors argued this trial was not about the accusations against Rosales. They say it's about Bettis' actions. You can read more about this trial. Just head to our website, ksat.com. Well, have you driven down Broadway lately north of downtown? As we all know, it's an even tighter squeeze than ever before. Two sections of Broadway near downtown will be closed off for the rest of 2023. So the rest of this year, Jonathan Cotto visited with two small business owners who are in survival mode as construction breaks ground. From behind the rubble are two small businesses struggling to survive. To be honest, it brings up a lot of emotions that are going to make me cry if I think about it. Alexandra is the owner um, of Max's Modern, a business she opened almost a year ago this month. But today her storefront is hidden behind broken asphalt and the sound of jackhammering. Between Brooklyn and McCullough, construction on Broadway is expected to go through December, creating a roadblock on small businesses, the most profitable time of the year. The holiday season. I, as a business owner, am really looking at um, having anywhere from 80 to 90 percent of my business completely taken away because I don't have foot traffic. And she's not alone. Right next door, Salvador okay. Sainz, part owner of Mosna Chocolate and Coffee Company. It's like a nightmare, you know, recurring nightmare for us. Both Salvador and Alexandra say they understand the construction is temporary, but the loss they are experiencing could have a permanent effect. I wish. Uh, the city will take more care, better care of us. Since we cannot pick up the business as, as we're supposed to, we can't employ people. We reached out to District 1 Councilwoman Dr. Suk Kaur, who says they've been working with the affected businesses during this construction period and will continue doing everything possible to minimize disruptions to their businesses. In this situation, what businesses, small businesses specifically need is some type of monetary funding and that they don't have. Once these streets open, the small business owners are hoping business will pick up. But for now, they want to remind the public that they are up and running and ready to serve. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 
a call out to Congress from San Antonio business groups. They want a direct flight from here to Washington, D.C., through the Ronald Reagan National Airport. So members of the Capital Access Alliance San Antonio Coalition spoke at San Antonio International Airport. They say the city needs a direct flight to the nation's capital, pointing to our huge military presence and growing business scene. Consider, for example, that we're the seventh largest city in the country without a single nonstop into DCA. We have a minimum of 158 passengers traveling daily from SAT to DCA today with connections. And if you step back and you look at the broader DCA, DC capital region, it's about 600 travelers. We've got the demand. So federal restrictions will limit those direct flights unless Congress steps in. While the clock is ticking to avert a potential strike of roughly 150,000 auto workers at factories run by big companies like GM and Ford. And this comes amid a summer of strikes and threatened strikes. ABC's Jay O'Brien points out the strikes are impacting industries from movie sets to school buses. The auto industry now hurtling towards a potential strike of nearly 150,000 of its workers with the deadline for a deal less than a week away. The United Auto Workers demanding a 40% pay increase over four years, which may seem steep, but it's the same increase the UAW says the CEOs of the big three U.S. automakers received. They're also asking for a 32-hour work week and a return of traditional pensions. We just want to be able to live a, a, a better standard of life. Automakers Ford, GM, and Stellantis, the maker of Dodge, Chrysler, and Jeep vehicles, calling the union's demands unrealistic. GM recently countering with a 10% pay increase. The union president calling that proposal insulting. When workers get fair and equitable justice and fair and equitable wages and benefits, they move the economy. According to a Michigan economic consulting firm that measures the cost of labor disputes, a 10-day strike could cost the broader U.S. economy more than $5 billion, on top of billions of losses for the automakers. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen telling ABC's senior White House correspondent Selena Wang the president is closely monitoring the situation. President Biden is hopeful that there will be an agreement that's reached. The potential walkout the latest in a summer of strikes from union actors and writers in Hollywood to a tense but avoided UPS labor dispute to a potential looming strike of New York City's school bus drivers as kids return to the classroom. Hopefully it doesn't happen. If it happens, guess what? We're all going to do things. We're going to figure it out. Back to that looming auto worker strike. The deadline for a deal is fast approaching. The current contract expires on midnight, September 15th. Next Friday, Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. The maker of sleep apnea machines has agreed to pay half a billion dollars to settle claims related to a recall. The law firm handling the class action lawsuit says there was a recall back in 2021 because of some ventilators. They contain foam that can break down, possibly causing the user to inhale or swallow particles or chemicals. The FDA says it's received more than 100,000 complaints and 400 reported deaths. For more information about the recall, you can go to the FDA website. The first experiment to produce oxygen on another planet is now coming to an end on Mars. So the experiment was launched more than two years ago, just months after the rover landed on Mars. Since then, the rover has generated enough oxygen for a small dog to breathe for 10 hours. It's like your puppy, mm, RJ. You <laughs> <laughs> the instrument works by converting some of Mars' plentiful carbon dioxide into oxygen. What's your puppy's name? Chloe. I don't think she'd Send like a trip Chloe to Mars. Mars. I don't think. <laughs> Unless you're going <laughs> she with can't her. She'd be away with a, from us for like two, well, more, my wife actually. <laughs> be away from her for more than two minutes, much less Mars. <laughs> um, it is 640 now and uh, 70 degrees as we get you up and ready on your Saturday morning. Up next, several items being recalled. Stay with us if you have any of these in your home. From frozen chicken strips to high chairs, several popular household items are currently being recalled. Uh, you'd hate to hear this. 12 On Your Side's Marilyn Moritz has our recall roundup that also includes some tainted Texas-made dog food. 
Have banquet chicken strip meals in your freezer? Check the box. ConAgra Brands is recalling 245,000 pounds of the frozen entrees because they may contain bits of plastic. The best buy dates are December 11th, 2024, January 1 or January 7th of 2025. Take them back or just throw them out. Is this your dog's chow? Mid-America Pet Food is recalling more than 600 cases of Victor Super Premium Dog Food High Pro Plus after salmonella was found in a sample at a Texas plant. These are five-pound bags with a best buy date of April 30th, 2024. Parent alert, Tomy is recalling 83,000 high chairs, Boone Flare, and Flare Elite models. The bolt can loosen and the seat can come off of the base. A couple dozen children have fallen. Contact Tomy for a chair repair kit. And if you bought smart plugs on Amazon, take a look. Emporia is recalling 80,000 of them because users can get shocked. You can contact the company to get new plugs or just get your money back. We have more details on all of these recalls on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Oh, Sarah, it's already pretty humid out there. 78 degrees, the sun's coming up. Yep, it is going to be just as hot as yesterday, guys. Mm. So 104 for the Hey, high. but Ouch. you are saying... This is, let's actually celebrate, because Sarah Spivey is saying this is our last triple digit weekend of the year. She is. <laughs> That's the way it she looks. She is doubling down. The That's the way it looks. And I expect if planet. we hit 100 degrees on a Saturday or something, you're going to come for me. No, I, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to pretend that you never said this, okay? <laughs> but this hey, never I, happened? Never in, happened. In <laughs> all honesty, good things are coming for us. So we just got to wait. Uh, but there is, a, again, it's going to be a hot day. It's 79 degrees outside right now. Humidity is high. We've got winds from the southwest at 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Gets you through the day. Mostly sunny skies this morning. 87 already by 10 a 10 degree jump quickly 94 by noon so when you're having lunch it's going to already be in the mid 90s and then already 100 degrees at two o'clock 104 for the afternoon high but it isn't until after 5 p.m that we have a small chance for an isolated shower or storm let me show you the future cast here again this is a look at six o'clock one or two storms are going to pop up. Don't pay attention to exactly where these blobs form here on the future cast. They could be anywhere around South Central Texas, even around San Antonio. Yes, it's possible. And after nine o'clock, they'll fizzle down and we'll be done for the day. Tomorrow going to be another hot day. We're going to be looking at a high of 101, but there is another window for rain. Tomorrow looks a little bit more promising for rainfall, about 40% coverage from 3 p.m. to 8 8 p.m. This particular model puts that rain right over San Antonio, but there's other models that put it to the west of San Antonio, to the east of San Antonio. So just know there's a chance it may not happen for the Alamo City, but there are slightly better rain chances tomorrow afternoon. So just to summarize your weekend, 104 today, a 30% chance for isolated rain from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And tomorrow, 101, a 40% chance for rain from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. And again, I think this will likely be our last triple digit weekend of the year. So here we'll put it all together for you. Rain chances this weekend. We know we're going to have record heat today and tomorrow. We also know we'll see some isolated rain. At least some folks will see some isolated rain. Here's what we're watching for. Which neighborhoods exactly will get rain? And if a storm pops up, it would likely produce stronger winds potentially damaging winds. So we're going to keep you posted, especially tonight, as there's going to be a lot of football games, a lot of people out and about this Saturday night. And of course, we'll keep you updated tomorrow as well. Here's a look at our weather setup. You can see that the Houston area is getting some good rain on the east side of this heat high, but this heat high is still the dominant weather pattern today. That's why all across the state of Texas, it's going to be hot. Triple digits for Abilene, San Angelo, Del Rio, Laredo, here in San Antonio, down to the valley in Brownsville as well. And in El Paso, it's going to be 104 degrees. But that heat height is going to move off to the west. It's still going to be hot tomorrow, 
But in the week ahead, with that heat high off to the west, that is going to open up the atmosphere for some showers and storms. Only a small chance in San Antonio every day, 20 to 30 percent. But the chance is there. And then this is what I'm really excited about. Even though that front will be weak, our highs are still going to be in the 90s in the middle of the week. That's not necessarily cold, right? But it is going to be a massive improvement from the triple digit stretch we've been in the last several days. Again, a record today and a record possible tomorrow as as well. Here's a look at that forecast put all together for you. 30% today, there's that timeline 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., 40% tomorrow, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then in the week ahead, isolated rain chances every day. We're only talking about 20 to 30 percent. OK, so this is not going to be our drought buster that we need to improve drought conditions, but it is a welcome change to the forecast, guys. Oh, yeah, welcome. Welcome, Jane. Yeah. I like how you said you're excited for temps in the mid 90s. I we'll am. take it. <laughs> and even that's warmer than average for September, but it is a, an improvement. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right, looking at 650 now on your Saturday morning and 78 degrees outside. Those are what they call revueltas. They will have cheese, beans, and pork. Oh my gosh, I think that was a Ooh. bean cup. Looks so Whatever good. That is, it oh looks my goodness, today on Texas East, David Elder heads up to Bernie for some authentic Mexican food. We will have. Now, these right here, you said pupusas, these are very popular. Talk to me about what they are and what goes inside of them. Those are what they call revueltas. They will have cheese, beans, and pork. And then, of course, they're topped with uh, what we call curtido, which is the pickled cabbage uh -huh. and salsa. All right, so I want you to get the same thing. Get your bite ready with me, Bruno. I'll do it the way we do it in El Salvador. How do you do it in El Salvador? In El Salvador, we take a piece of, uh -huh. of the pupusa like this. Then we grab some of, oh, the, of, <laughs> of the cabbage like that. Uh -huh. And then we put a little bit of the salsa, and then Cheers. salud. Salud. <laughs> there we go, the papusas. Looks good. Okay, mm -hmm. and your consumer news, Snapchat is adding more methods to keep teens from connecting with strangers. So new safeguards include making 13 to 17 year old people Harder to find in searches, there will also be a strike system for accounts that share age of inappropriate content. And Google says the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro phones are arriving on October 4th. Google says the new devices feature the most advanced Pixel camera yet and Google AI. I don't know if I uh, like that, mm -hmm. Google AI, but uh -uh. here we go. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> the new Pixel Watch 2 will also be launched on the same day. And Polaroid has announced a new higher-end camera, according to the company. The i2 contains the sharpest lens Polaroid has ever produced, along with built-in manual controls. The camera is available for about $600. So, but it still shoots out the Polaroids, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, kind of cool. that gives you a little bit of that old school, new school kind of deal going on. There. I like, I like the way that old school Polaroid yeah, looks those though, are pretty cool. where it's not sharp. Yeah. Therefore, you don't. It's like, it's like the old school filter. <laughs> right. Blurs yes. out any <laughs> any flaws on the face. You're blurry. <laughs> Yeah. Blurry, you look beautiful. Yeah. Doing great, sweetie. Um, okay, so we made it through the first hour. Good morning, San Antonio. On your Saturday morning, get you up and going here. Time now is 655 and uh, still looking at 78 degrees outside. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, a devastating earthquake in Morocco overnight, leaving more than 600 people confirmed dead and hundreds injured. We'll have more on the toll of the 6.8 magnitude quake as rescuers search for survivors in the rubble. Also coming up, the latest on the parenting influencer charged with child abuse, Ruby Frankie appearing in court as we learn about the reported missed warning signs over the years. And finally, the sights and sounds from the U.S. Open. What's next for Novak Djokovic in the tournament? and looking ahead to Coco Goff's face-off later today in her first U.S. Open final. That's all ahead right here on GMA. 
Alrighty, we are going to have a quick warm up already 90 degrees by 11 already at 100 by 2 o'clock and then it's later this afternoon after 5 p.m. that we have a chance for isolated rain. It's going to be 104 degrees though, so plan for the heat. The chance for rain is only 20 to 30 percent. Slightly better rain chances tomorrow between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. and then we see a weather pattern change when we've waited for a long time mm -hmm. with highs in the 90s and isolated rain each day. So long, been waiting it for, for I know. so long. It's gonna happen this week, I'm so excited. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> we'll Thank be back you, here. RJ. Yeah, we'll be back here in just a little bit. Stay you guys us. at eight. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good Saturday morning, everyone. Taking a look at live cam and we are getting ready to go for your weekend. Sarah Spivey standing by with the latest forecast. It's gonna be another hot one, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Good morning. It is Saturday, September 9th. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, RJ, for being here. Yes, for absolutely. I, I love hanging out with the Sarah squad, so Woo! very happy to be here. And uh, yeah, filling in for my guy, Max Massey. Much needed, much deserved vacay for Max. Yes, and I'm sure he's not dealing with triple digits like we mm -hmm. still are, but Sarah, you have some good news for us. I do. I am quite confident in saying that this will be our last triple digit weekend of 2023. That is good news. It's bad news though, because it's still going to be hot today. In fact, we're likely going to beat a 130 year old record for the day today. So take advantage of this brief period of time where temperatures are in the 70s and low 80s. 78 in San Antonio, 80 in New Braunfels. It's 78 in Seguin. Good morning in Bernie, where it's 72 degrees. 72 in Kerrville. A nice view there of the first light of the day. Here's a look at your weekend forecast. So yes, 104 today, 101 tomorrow. And both today and tomorrow, there are a few windows for isolated rain. Today, the coverage will only be about 20 to 30 percent. So You'll be lucky if you see rain between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Tomorrow, slightly better rain chances, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Regardless, rain is not a guarantee this weekend. And if a storm does develop both today and tomorrow, it could become severe with gusty winds being the main threat. So needless to say, there is a lot to talk about in the forecast. Not only this hot weekend with window for rain, but also a cool front moving through Texas, a real deal cool front in the week ahead. I'll have those details coming up. RJ, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. It's been a week and a half since the hurricane in Florida hit. And now we've learned that a third death has been reported. The state says that this is a 90 year old man who has died. And despite visits from the governor and president, residents in the hardest hit areas tell our sister station they need help rebuilding. Coastal towns in Florida's Big Bend are still a mess. Miles of destruction, streets full of debris. How are things a week and a half later? Still about the same. I've at least got the water, but we're working with them to try to figure out how to get the power back on. We met Horseshoe Beach residents Jim and Sally Johnson when we sheltered together during the hurricane. We were just inland from the coast in a town called Cross City. Jim had just gotten done with surgery for colon cancer. Their home is intact, but it's damaged. They're staying on a friend's couch, hoping for a FEMA trailer to live in temporarily. So everything that you're spending right now is out of pocket? Yes. yes. Zero dollars from insurance, from FEMA, from anybody? Yeah, mostly right now, like I said, you know, it's kicking our butt, you know, financially. Blocks away, fishing guide Hope Reinke is taking things day by day. She too is waiting for word from her insurance company and FEMA. For now, tapping into her limited savings. There is a lot of good for people to be thankful for. The fire station is filled with donated food, water and supplies. Nonprofits are helping, but there are also problems. The Dixie County Sheriff's Office has arrested several people suspected of looting. Still, residents say they have seen more good than bad in the wake of such a devastating storm. <laughs> Vic Michalucci, Channel 4, the local station. Following some top stories this morning, Guy Embedes has been found not guilty on the shootings and killings of his mother's boyfriend. So Bettis admitted on a 911 call 
to shooting his mother's boyfriend. This happened last year, but he says it was to protect a family member. So in August of 2022, Bettis was accused of shooting and killing 39-year-old Luis Rosales. Rosales was accused of sexually assaulting one of Bettis's close relatives. At the end of Bettis's trial, Bettis and his family were grateful a Bear County jury cleared him of murder. We feel that justice has been served on Guyan. You know, he took the actions he took to defend the ones he loved. Prosecutors argued this trial was not about the accusations against Rosales. They say it's about Bettis' actions. You can read more about the trial. Just head to our website, ksat.com. Police arrested a man following a stabbing on the city's east side while another was taken to the hospital. This happened Thursday before 10.30 p.m. at a house in the 300 block of Rice Road. Police say a 31-year-old man punched a 51-year-old man in the face and then stabbed him in the torso area. That's when the victim went outside to the street to call for help. The suspect is facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and failure to identify to a police officer with a Texas warrant. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers searching for a man who they say punched and cut employees at a dollar store on the north side. Just take a look on your screen right now. This happened around 930 in the morning on January 19th at the Family Dollar next to the George Gervin Academy on Blanco Road. So police say after the suspect was told to leave, he walked up to an employee and allegedly punched him. Another employee tackled the man and the suspect then pulled out a knife and cut him. Crime Stoppers is asking anyone for information to contact police or call the number on your screen right there. We have updates on two recent deadly incidents on the roadways. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified the victim, 63-year-old Victor Culver, was killed a week ago on Loop 410 when police say that he was pinned by his own truck against a guardrail. Officers say witnesses told them that Culver had stopped on 410 near the Fredericksburg Road exit and got out of his truck while it was still running. The pickup then rolled, wedging him in between his truck and a guardrail. Officers have not said why Culver initially got out of the vehicle. And a woman hit and killed while walking down Claybro Road near Hortensia Avenue has been identified as 26-year-old Desiree Estrada. She died on August 31st. Investigators say Estrada was struck by a driver who did stop and called police. No charges have been filed. Police say where this crash happened, there is not a designated crosswalk. Well, if you've driven down Broadway, just north of downtown lately, you've probably noticed a big, big mess, major mess there. Two sections of Broadway are closed off for the rest of the year because of ongoing construction and small business owners are starting to feel it. I, as a business owner, am really looking at um, having anywhere from 80 to 90 percent of my business completely taken away because I don't have foot traffic. So I have to um, try to secure funding. I have to try to secure credit line of credit. Um, anything that I can do to kind of uh, put my business on pause potentially um, during that time. I wish uh, the city would take more care, better care of us. Since we cannot pick up the business as, as we're supposed to, we can't employ people. Yeah, tough situation there for those business owners. So they hope that once the construction projects are done, customer traffic will pick back up. As for now, they want everyone to know that, yes, they are open for business despite that construction. You can read more about the Broadway Bond Project on our website. Just look for this article on ksat.com. It's 78 degrees at 807. All right, yeah, getting you going here. Here's a good way to get going. Texas Eats, and this is really cool. San Antonio native celebrity Ricardo Chavita played Selena's dad in the latest Netflix series. Joins David Elder on a journey to find the spiciest bites in town. We have your preview coming right up. Meet the tech boot camp that aims to put an end to the bro culture in tech after the break, how they're helping to create the new face of the tech industry. A tech boot camp is offering a solution to change workforce trend. It's called Ada Developers Academy, named after Augusta Ada Lovelace, a 19th century mathematician who is considered the founder of computer science. Very cool. And as Alexa Lorenzo reports, her legacy continues to have a lasting impact. That's good to hear. As an aspiring software engineer, Nancy Lee knows the competition in tech can be fierce. But she's found a way to overcome those barriers, thanks to Ada Developers Academy. 
My favorite thing about Ada is the community. Because all of us as uh, women, we are not here to step on each other. We're here to, to help each other. Ada Developers Academy is a software coding boot camp for women and gender expansive adults. With women holding only approximately 25% of tech jobs, CEO of Ada, Lauren Sato, says the need for a school geared toward women became clear. It is so intimidating to get into this space as a woman, as a gender expansive person. And so for 10 years, Ada Developers Academy has been helping them enter that space with a six month coding boot camp class, followed by a five month internship with an industry leader. The best part of it all? Ada being tuition free is really a game changer. I wanted a different path. Ada was the only reason that I would, that I, I knew I would be able to, to get into the, the tech field. And the results are stunning. Not only do 94% of graduating students land a full-time tech job within six months after completing the program. Work on something that you really want to work on right now. They nearly triple their salary. A moment Lee anxiously awaits for as she nears graduation. I am both excited and nervous. But she knows Ada will be there for her every step of the way. I'm Alexa Lorenzo reporting. Sarah, yes. Yesterday I went out and I gardened mm -hmm. and I paid for it later. I had to drink a Pedialyte. <laughs> Girl, I know. Yeah. Kudos to you because, yeah, we got up to 104 mm -hmm. yesterday. We broke the record high yesterday. And, guys, we're going to do it again, except the record for the day is 102. Our forecast high is 104. But the last time we had a record high for September 9th in San Antonio was 130 years ago in 1893. So today we are going to beat a 130 year old record with a high of 104. Tomorrow we're gonna to be close to the record two of 101 set back in 1940. But as you can see, this is not all bad news, right? We've got some good news in the forecast. Temperatures are gradually going to come down a little bit into the middle of the week. Highs will only be in the low to mid 90s which I don't know about you, that is a massive improvement from temperatures well into the triple digits this far into September. So let's go ahead and talk about the day today. Right now, as you can see outside, we've had some high thin cirrus clouds move in just in the last hour or so. And that's because uh, we had some storms across Texas uh, in areas closer to Houston and so some of those clouds have made their way to San Antonio. It's 78 degrees right now. Winds are calm. As you look at the forecast for the day though, we are going to be seeing clearing skies. It'll be 94 by noon, so such a quick warm up. We're already going to be in the mid 90s by noon and then in the afternoon 104 degrees for that high temperature. And it's after 5 p.m. that we have a small 30% chance for an isolated shower or storm this afternoon. Here's a look at that on the future cast. Again, just one or two isolated storms this afternoon randomly around San Antonio. We're not going to know where they pop up until they pop up and then we'll track them for you. But again, there is a potential here in San Antonio that we could see an isolated storm as we head into the early evening hours. Once we lose the daytime heat, our rain chance will be done for the day. Tomorrow starts off quiet as well, but it is in the afternoon that we see the potential for a few more storms than even today. So slightly better chances tomorrow, right around 40% after 3 p.m. in San Antonio. I think this particular model is overdoing it a little bit, and this particular model puts all the rain over San Antonio, which would be a good thing, but the rain may also be a little bit further west or to the east. That's why chance is only about 40% uh, because we really don't know where the rain is going to set up tomorrow afternoon, but we do know between about 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. it will be a possibility. And as you can see today, there is a severe weather risk in all of these areas inside of this yellow blob. Isolated severe storm or two may pop up. Not everybody inside of this yellow blob will see severe weather, but if you do happen to get an isolated storm, the primary threat there would be a damaging wind gust that we typically see uh, around those summertime uh, storms that pop up. It's important to note that that could happen during some of the football games this evening. Regardless, so plan for the heat because it's going to be hot. 99 right around kickoff, sunset about 747, and then by halftime still 93. Of course, there is that small 30% chance for an isolated shower or storm. Some more good news. We'll at least have a chance for a rain in the forecast in the week ahead. It's not a great chance, only 20 to 30%, but it's uh, there because of a weak cool 
cool front moving through in the middle of the week by Tuesday. And as you can see, that's what's going to allow for our highs to be down into the mid 90s rather than in the triple digits. So some good news there in the forecast. Finally, we needed a little bit of good news. It's still going to be warm, but at least it's not going to be in the triple digits. By the way, Hurricane Lee, which was a category five hurricane yesterday, now a category three. Mm. I'll show you the track for Hurricane Lee coming up in just a bit. Mm. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, and I know we've been talking about it, but UTSA Texas State tonight or today during yeah. the afternoon. So just make sure to stay hydrated out there, especially if you're tailgating out yeah. in the parking lot. Ooh. Yeah. A lot of people are going to be out there. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, it is 817 and 79 degrees outside. After the break, we'll tell you about some events going on this weekend, including what the city of San Antonio's World Heritage Office is celebrating. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, two, one, fireball five, daily four, six, four, nine, three, fireball one. And we have a cash five there, five, 20, 26, 34, and 35. Good luck to everyone. Oh, and we have mega millions here too, three, 12, 17, 51, 62. And what do you call these, sir? The, the yellow, Mega Ball. The Mega Ball. There you go, one. And then Mega Flyer, three. Good luck. Welcome back. The city of San Antonio is hosting the eighth annual World Heritage Festival this weekend with plenty of, event, of events for you and the family. All events continue through this Sunday tomorrow. The goal is to celebrate San Antonio's unique history. That includes, of course, the missions, which are a UNESCO World Heritage site. So starting at 10 this morning, they're having a Junior Ranger event until 2 o'clock at the San Antonio Missions National Historical Park. Mission San Juan, director of the World Heritage Office of San Antonio, Colleen Swain says there's something for everyone. I encourage people to bring your family, but you can also go by yourself. Um, and um, you you make new friends, um, the bike ride and the run uh, in particular. There's, there's just something for everyone, um, regardless if you're alone or with a big group or you're bringing uh, small children. All right, and to learn more about the events, head to the WorldHeritageFestival.org. Should be a lot of fun out there. Love learning about the history and culture of our city. Love Good times that. out there, yeah. All right, time now is 822. Still looking at uh, 78 degrees outside. So listen up, spicy food lovers. San Antonio native celebrity Ricardo Chavita, also known for his role in Desperate Housewives. That's right. Evelyn Gordia's husband. Mm -hmm. And also recently played Abraham on the Selena mm -hmm. Netflix show. Well, he joins David Elder on a journey to find the spiciest bites in town. That's up next in your Texas Eats preview. So you got the hottest ones now. All right. This is the creeper. Now, they're known for this wing being the spiciest wing on the menu. It's got the barbecue sauce, it's got the ghost pepper sauce on there. I'm still feeling a little bit of the heat from the, the KK. The, the it's kind of lingering. Yeah. Cheers to you. Let's this is it. the creeper wing. Let's do it. That's a bite. Oh, it's when you swallow it. <laughs> it, it builds up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, are you okay? <laughs> okay, there it goes. The longer it stays on the lips, it gets a little bad. It's definitely a step above the KK, but it's this is a dual spice level, right? Mm -hmm. On the Ricardo meter, where are you putting this one? It's good. Good? It's good. Is that above doable? Hot. A little above doable. <laughs> a little hot. I don't want. Do you like spicy food? <laughs> I do not. No, the and that's creeper. my biggest thing. I don't like being uh, sweating or being <laughs> uncomfortable eating, but the Chavita meter, there you go. I like that. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay. The creeper, what a name. That's How about you? No. The spicy food? I, oh, no. I, I'm like the biggest yeah. like wuss. Like I can't. Mm -mm. I do like some, I do like, so I just don't like it when it's so hot that you start like basically what they were doing. Yeah, you're, like, I want my, to, my like, catch your eating breath. experience to be pleasant, yeah, not painful. 
<laughs> um, still pretty cool there that David got to hang out with uh, yeah. Ricardo. Yeah, San Antonio native, always uh, so representing. You can for... check out that full episode right after our show today at 10 a.m. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so 827 right now, 78 degrees on your Saturday morning. So we take a look outside with live cam, and you can see that uh, things are looking pretty good out there right now, city of San Antonio. We're expecting another hot one. We're going to get to your weather here in just a little bit after the break. Welcome back and good morning. It's now 830 on your Saturday, September 9th. Thank you so much for being with us here, RJ. Love hanging out with the Sarah squad. Uh, not a fan of the heat that we're expected to no, see, but still you so guys are you're awesome. You're going to go tailgate later today. Just some tailgating. In the parking lot of the dome. Mm -hmm. Got to do it. I got to be out there Bless for the team. You. It, Sarah, because it's going to be like, but hey, is this our last triple digit day or tomorrow? Okay, not last triple digit day. I'm saying it's the last triple digit weekend of 2023. Mm, still okay. Positive. But still, <laughs> yeah, because we could still get to 100 on Monday. So, hey. Boo. But hey, that is a positive part about this forecast. First, though, I want to talk about the tropics because all eyes have been on Hurricane Lee. What's well, a category three hurricane, but it has uh, weakened a little bit to a category three. Sorry, it was category five yesterday. It's weakened a little bit to a category three. Now, Lee is expected to re-strengthen into at least a category four hurricane in the coming days. It's going to slow down significantly still in the Atlantic by the middle of the week, and then it'll turn to the north. So a lot of the spaghetti plots have this away from land, which is good news, but we will have to watch out for Bermuda there. Uh, Lee, again, a very strong hurricane out in the Atlantic. It is peak Atlantic hurricane season after all, but we are staying dry here in San Antonio. 78 degrees at the Alamo City, seven, uh, 80 in Del Rio, 73 in Rock Springs. Good morning in Pleasanton. It's 76, 75 in Carissa Springs. This is a look at the brutal highs today. 104 degrees in San Antonio, 106 in Del Rio, 106 in Catula, 102 in Kernville. Again, this would tie, this would beat a record set back in 1893 of 102 for the day. Now, there is a small window for rain this afternoon, uh, pardon me, this evening after 5 p.m., about a 20 to 30 percent chance. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk a little bit about how tomorrow afternoon has slightly better rain chances, and there is a small risk for severe weather as well uh, with that uh, isolated rain popping up later on this evening. Those details ahead. RJ, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. The county's top elected officials say he is coming, he is forming a city and county committee to tackle the complicated problem of why violent crimes are being released from jail only to commit more crime. So the district attorney's office handles an average of 50,000 cases each year, handled by roughly 200 criminal prosecutors. The DA's office is asking for more than $52 million in the upcoming year. That's part of that would include pay increases for staff and additional positions. He says moving forward his, is his goal to strengthen communication with law enforcement investigators to ensure that they have strong evidence to prosecute cases. What we, we can do and we are doing is uh, collaborate, collaborating better with law enforcement, uh, communicating with them, ensuring that we get the kind of uh, cases in our office where we can uh, expedite the prosecution of those cases. So four years ago, Gonzalez implemented a decl declination policy in which he said he would not prosecute low-level drug offenses. He stopped that policy early this month. A state law that went into effect in September forced DAs to prosecute those cases. And on Monday, Police Chief William McManus and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez will be at a District 4 Public Safety Town Hall. The Town Hall is scheduled to start at 6 at St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church. That's on Marbach Road. Now, we plan to live, live stream that event, and it's going to be live streamed on all of our KSAT platforms. A former Rio Grande Valley attorney is pleading guilty to extorting $1,500 from a defendant's mother. 50-year-old Victor Canales was an attorney in Starr County from 2005 to 2022. Records show that a woman started working with Canales about her son's charges. After the woman sent the money, he deposited the money into his own bank accounts. The release adds that he used the money, quote, for his own personal needs rather than depositing the monies into the Star 
County account, end quote. He faces up to 20 years in prison and a possible fine of up to $250,000. Well, police have arrested a suspect that's linked to a 2022 carjacking and shooting. This happened on the city's south side and left one person dead. So 24-year-old Jaime Garza was driving with two other suspects when they were, quote, looking for a truck to steal and targeted Flores' truck. All three suspects got out and SAPD says two of them were armed. Flores was able to free himself and get back into his vehicle. That's when one of the suspects pulled a gun and fired at Flores, which led to killing him. Garza's bond for the murder charge is set at $150,000. San Antonio business groups are asking Congress for a direct flight from here to Washington, D.C. through the Ronald Reagan National Airport. Members of the Capital Access Alliance San Antonio Coalition spoke at San Antonio International Airport yesterday. They say the city needs a direct flight to the nation's capital, pointing to our huge military presence and growing business scene. Consider, for example, that we're the seventh largest city in the country without a single nonstop into DCA. We have a minimum of 158 passengers traveling daily from SAT to DCA today with connections. And if you step back and you look at the broader DC, DC capital region, it's about 600 travelers. We've got the demand. All right, so here's the thing. Federal restrictions limit those direct flights unless Congress steps in. Well, just weeks into the new year, San, one San Antonio school says it's closing its doors already. Students and staff at Jubilee Academy's Highland Park campus will move to other charter schools this month. Jubilee Academy's notified parents that Highland Park would close and students would start at one of its other campuses by September 18th. So Associate Director of the School Development, Abel De, De Leon, says parents will be able to transfer their students to Jubilee Highland Hills or Jubilee San Antonio. They'll offer bus transportation at the Highland Park campus through the end of the school year. Everybody got this point. It was like a last minute thing. It was very emotional. We couldn't believe it. To hear that the school was closing was very heart wrenching. So we asked Elion about making the changes during the school year. He said finishing the school year would have left Jubilee with a deficit of $1.5 million adding they need 100 more students to be able to stay open. Overseas now to India and the big G20 summit. President Biden meeting with India's prime minister overnight. That's right. So ABC's Selena Wang gives us a look into that meeting. Overnight, President Joe Biden shaking hands with the world's most important leaders in New Delhi, India, cementing America's influence in the region amid shared concerns over China. Russia's Vladimir Putin and China's Xi Jinping are skipping the event, but their absence looms large. Central to Biden's foreign policy is boosting global support for Ukraine. Even though the leaders are compromising on a joint statement about Ukraine, there's still disagreement among them about how to call Russia out for its invasion. Meanwhile, the U.S. is watching for a potential Kim Jong-un trip to Russia, while the White House says Putin wants weapons from North Korea for its war. What more do we know about this and how is Biden going to respond? It's another indication of how desperate Mr. Putin is. Should North Korea decide to go ahead and consummate this arms deal? Again, we haven't seen them do that yet. But if they move ahead, there will be additional repercussions for North Korea. Climate change is another key priority. The UN Secretary General urging the G20 to limit the rise in global temperatures. The climate crisis is worsening dramatic, but the collective response is lacking in ambition, credibility and urgency. All right, so moving on here, a rare powerful earthquake struck Morocco late last night, killing more than 1,000 people. The toll is expected to rise as rescuers search through the rubble there. Morocco's interior ministry says that at least 1,037 people have died. Moroccan media are also reporting one of the city's most famed landmarks suffered damage, but the extent is not clear at this time. New Mexico's governor is announcing that gun violence is now a public health emergency. She says the order suspends Open and concealed carry laws and prohibits carrying guns on public property in most cases. And it's not just guns the governor is concerned about. The order also calls drug abuse an emergency. The state's Department of Health will start testing wastewater for, at schools for illegal substances like fentanyl. 
And early data from South America shows the flu vaccine has cut the risk of hospitalization in half this year. That's based on about 300,000 patients or 3,000 patients, excuse me, hospitalized between late March and early July. It's a hopeful sign, though, the vaccine will provide a similar level of protection in the U.S. as we head into flu season. According to the CDC, this year's mid-season flu vaccine data from five South American countries shows vaccination has reduced the risk of hospitalization by about 52%. Yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. Flu oh, season. We have to get our flu shots. Yes, got to get the flu shot soon. I know that at KSAT, they give yeah, it. They get, have someone coming. Got to. Yeah, yeah, you got to sign up. We yeah. get to go. Okay. <laughs> get those flu KSAT, shots, everybody. Keep this, <laughs> remind Take us. Care of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, it is 841 now, Saturday morning. Uh, it's look at that uh, 79 degrees outside right now. Okay, are you ready to step up your selfie game? Polaroid is coming out with a high end camera. We'll take a look at that coming up. Uh, yes, and Saturday plans. People may be getting up, starting to think about what they're going to do today. Maybe head out to a football game later today. Sarah Spivey is going to give us the very latest with your weather coming up after the break. Good morning. Welcome back, Sarah. It's already 80 degrees at 845. Yeah. yeah, and if you look outside, we do have a few clouds out there right now, actually, but they're deceiving because mm -hmm. it's going to be a hot day. 104 for the high temperature Ugh. today. I know. Ugh is right. OK, let's take a look at temperatures and clouds. 73 in Bernie, 80 in New Braunfels, 78 at Stinson. Good morning in Hondo, it's 70 degrees, 70 in Los Maples, rather, it's 77 in Hondo, 75 in Kerrville. You can see that we do have a few clouds out there right now early this morning. That is not unusual. That's the way it's been the last several mornings, but we are quickly going to see nothing but sunshine and heat up 94 at noon already in the mid 90s by noon 104 for the afternoon high this afternoon and after 5 p.m. There is a small 20 to 30 percent chance for an isolated shower or storm. It's a small chance, but it is something that we have to account for and take a look in the future cast. You can see isolated is the key word here. One or two peppering the radar around South Central Texas. We really won't know what neighborhood hoods exactly get rain. If you get rain, you'll be lucky again, 20 to 30% chance. And then as we lose the daytime heating after sunset, our rain chance is done for the day. Tomorrow starts off very similar to today, and it's going to be a hot one. High temperature near 100 degrees, but there is a slightly better chance for uh, some scattered showers and storms after 3 p.m. Now, I think this particular model is overdoing it a little bit. It puts all of the rain right over San Antonio. That would be an ideal situation, but that blob of rain could be off to the west. It could be off to the east. We'll just have to wait and see, but a slightly better chance, about 40% chance tomorrow. So putting it all together for you in the weekend forecast, 104 today, isolated rain from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. tonight, and then tomorrow, 101. So still the vast majority of us just experiencing a hot weekend, but a 40% chance for scattered showers from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> Sarah is drinking a Celsius over there. Okay. All right. So just to, okay, here we go. Just to reiterate, uh, here's what we know. Record heat today and tomorrow. And we also know that there will be some isolated rain. Here's what we're going to be watching for. Which neighborhoods will get rain? And if we do happen to get a storm, we will have to watch for damaging wind gusts. So this is what I'll be watching for throughout the day today and tomorrow as well. Looking at the satellite and radar across the nation. East Texas getting some rain as well as Houston area all around this ridge of high pressure. This is one of the reasons why we have a chance for rain today. This high is west enough to open up the atmosphere to a few of those isolated showers and storms. That being said, this heat high is still going to be the dominant weather pattern this weekend. 104 in San Antonio, but as you can see, it's going to be hot all across Texas. Then that heat high moves enough off to the west to open up the atmosphere to a cold front. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is going to be a cool front, a very weak cool front, not really dropping our temperatures into that crisp fall cold autumn air but instead it's going to help to bring isolated rain chances just about every single day this week and it's going to lower our highs significantly enough 
to where it will be noticeable. So this weekend in the triple digits, but as we head into next week, our highs will be a bit more seasonable, closer into the low 90s, which is a welcome change if you ask me. And again, there will be an isolated shower or storm in the week ahead. Sorry for um, laughing there. It was just very loud noise. Okay, so proof that this, this yep. is an energy yeah. drink, not a beer. Yeah, <laughs> I cracked not open starting, an energy. Not starting the tailgate at oh the dome gosh. early. Oh my 849 is here. an early. <laughs> with a white cloth. <laughs> with a white. It says Celsius, Celsius. not Celsius. white cloth. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Well, it looks good, though. Thank you. It's good, Thank yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, entertainment. <laughs> All right, guys, it is uh, 849 now on your Saturday morning, and we are up to 80 degrees, and we said yep. just inching higher as we get it's through. It's going to be a hot one. <laughs> All right, Microsoft coming clean about how hackers were able to leak information about U.S. officials earlier this summer. We'll take a look at that coming up next. Microsoft has revealed how alleged Chinese hackers were able to breach senior U.S. official emails earlier this summer. That's in a statement the tech giant said it happened after hackers stole sensitive data from a Microsoft engineer. So Microsoft has been under scrutiny from U.S. lawmakers and officials who have demanded more information on how the hackers broke into the email account. So Microsoft says it has corrected the issues that led to that breach. All right, and Snapchat is adding more methods to keep teens from connecting with strangers. The new safeguards include making 13 to 17 year old people harder to find in searches. There will also be a strike system for accounts that share age inappropriate content. Polaroid has announced a new high end camera. According to the company, the i2 contains the sharpest lens Polaroid has ever made, along with built in manual controls. The camera is available now for about $600, RJ. So you're mm -hmm. still, it's still, you know, instantly shoots out the Polaroid. Yeah, absolutely. And I was really interested. That's actually what I was looking at my phone right now. I was <laughs> Googling more about this Polaroid camera to see kind of, uh, you know, kind of what makes it different. But yeah, I think the biggest I attraction is that it just sends out. If the lens is sharper, pictures. does the Polaroid still look like yeah. a Polaroid or does it just look like a Cause you instant like that. printer camera? Oh, interesting. You know I mean? Yeah. We were talking earlier, you like that blurry kind of effect. Yeah, we won't. <laughs> it's like it's it was, it's like blurrier the OG, is better. Yeah. Uh, filter. <laughs> yeah, blurrier is better. I right. guess. <laughs> All right. It is now 8:54 as we get closer to nine o'clock, and we have gotten to 80 degrees already Saturday morning here. <sighs> okay, so if you're already back on the fall coffee train this season, Starbucks has a sweet deal this month that involves free coffee. Yes, they're going to be giving out free coffee, but we'll tell you how it works next. Okay, RJ, what's your go-to fall drink? Mm, very important question here. Actually, it's uh, just like a nice, like, warm or hot cafecito. Oh, you're not I'm a PSL? I'm good with that. PSL no, boy? I'm not a pumpkin spice. No, <laughs> I'm not a PSL. Okay, I well. Don't, I don't hate on people that like the PSL, but no. Back off not. the PSL. <laughs> I love PSLs. Okay, we're talking about pumpkin spice lattes. Yeah. Well, next Thursday, be sure to pick one up because Starbucks is having a buy one, get one deal every Thursday this month. So after 12 p.m., the coffee chain will give a free fall drink to Starbucks rewards members who buy one. Wow. So the fall lineup includes a fan favorite, there the PSL, go. the pumpkin spice latte. The offer can only be used once each Thursday. So don't be going in multiple drive through lines trying to get mm -hmm. your free drinks. Oh, and on Thursday, everyone was like, did you get by your Starbucks? Did you get this and that? I had no idea what they were talking about, but there you go. Now you know. PSL time. It's were you PSL. already, have you already gotten your pumpkin spice? I have not. Fix? No. Oh, wow. And you, well, it's been so hot. Yeah. I can't. You can't get into that. No, because I like, to, I like to have it hot, not cold. Or else it's not a real PSL. There you go, okay. Yeah, people who get yeah. PSLs and they're still ice, it doesn't count. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't count. count. There you go, PSL rules with Sarah Costa <laughs> this morning. <laughs> we are getting closer to 9 o'clock and it's 8.58 and uh, 80 degrees outside. We'll be right back.